Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk to you about mapping a security to kill chain to a 100,000 plus daily container environment with using Falco. We've been using Falco for since about 2018 and we'll talk to you today about some of our lessons learned, how we map these things and how we can identify security risks. Hopefully uh, you can take something away from that and apply it to your own environment. So before we get started, let's do a quick introduction. My name is Eric Hollis. I'm the team lead for the extended detection and response team at MathWorks uh, as part of the larger information security group. Some of my interests are cloud security, automation, and threat hunting. And hi, I'm Natch. I'm a software engineer at MathWorks, and I work with Eric to ensure that all our cloud services are secure. So I manage a Kubernetes cluster, and within our cluster, we have a lot of containers and some of our containers manage traffic from the public cloud. We dynamically scale our container to be able to handle all the traffic load. On a very busy day, we have over 100,000 containers running in our cluster. Now, because we handle public traffic, security is one of our top priority and we follow many security best practices. We make sure to properly configure our control plane and we regularly scan our applications and kernel to make sure that there are no known vulnerabilities. We also make sure to configure our cloud provider to only accept expected traffic. Now, despite all our effort to make our system secure, there's no such thing as a perfect security. And one day there could be zero day vulnerabilities in the Kubernetes version that we use and the kernel version that we use. Or our developer might one day misconfigure Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster. And also there could be a security bug in our application or the packages that we include in our containers. So here comes 2020 and not everything in 2020 goes exactly according to plan. So there could be an attacker and one of the steps that the attacker can follow is the following. The attacker could port scan and maybe identify a service with vulnerable code execution. The attacker could next gain access to the system and install packages like Metasploit. And then could leverage kernel vulnerability to break up the container. And lastly, replace our service with a malicious program to steal data. So how do we trace back the attackers? And more importantly, how do we improve our system so that we identify the attack at the earliest stage? Well, to be able to do so, we must be able to answer the following questions at different stages of the attack. And that's when we look into Falco as the potential solution to answer these questions. Falco is a cloud native runtime security project and it can be deployed to the cluster and it detects abnormal activities in our cluster based on the API server audit events and the system calls. Falco is Kubernetes and container aware and it allow us to write detection rules based on the Kubernetes context and container metadata. Falco also offer flexible alert integrations, but how do we strategically and effectively use Falco to monitor these events to make sure we catch the attack at the earliest stage? That's a good question, Notch. Uh, let me walk through our strategy with Falco. So we take an iterative approach to design our Falco rules to maximize security observability in our system and to reduce false positives. So we have this cycle here that kind of constantly feeds itself and we are uh, constantly analyzing our environment to better improve security 
uh, prevention and detection. So we'll go through each stage as we move through this and I'll uh, give you a better understanding of what that looks like. So let's first focus on system analysis. Uh, we follow this workflow to analyze our application both at the container and cluster level. So if you take a look here, you know, the system uh, can be very complex. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of different services um, that you have to really understand if you're going to build out your own Falco detections. It can be really environment specific and doing a system analysis can really help drive uh, how you would look at potential security risks in your environment. So some of the things we want to look at at the container level is uh, in the network, we want to look at inbound and outbound connections. We want to understand what ports should be open, what connections we uh, allow, and we want to be able to get an understanding of that so we know what to monitor. For file system, we want to look at things like sensitive files and, you know, make a list of those, whitelist those, um, or, you know, make a list so that we know what to closely monitor. For memory and CPU, we want to have an understanding of workload characterization, so what we would expect from the workload, and then start to monitor the unexpected. For the, at the cluster level, we want to monitor things like role-based access control. We want to see, you know, who should have access, if anyone, into a production environment. And we want to really have an understanding of what that is so that we can then monitor uh, more closely. We also want to whitelist our container images so that if there's an unexpected image in the environment, then we can further investigate. And so really getting an understanding of your entire stack and application in a cluster, you get a better idea of what you should be looking out for. So after we have that understanding of our system, we can then start to map that to a cyber um, security kill chain to analyze where our potential security risks are. So I'll go into more detail about the different phases of the kill chain and give you an understanding of, of what that is. So we've mapped to the Lockheed Martin cyber security kill chain. There's seven stages. And we'll go through all of these, um, starting from reconnaissance. This is the common pattern that an attacker would use to compromise a system. They might not go through every phase here, but they're ultimately going to start at reconnaissance, which is fingerprinting the system, looking at what operating system is running, any ports that are open, what services are running. They're ultimately going to move their way down to delivering an exploit, exploiting the system, you know, potentially installing malware and so on. And so you can start to map your different attack scenarios um, to this kill chain and then start to identify where the risks are and build Falco rules off of that. So let's just go through a quick uh, description of each stage here. So reconnaissance, like I said, this is the fingerprinting stage where, you know, an attacker is just trying to figure out what's going on in the system, what it's running, um, you know, trying to figure out is it a containerized application and that sort of thing. The next phase is weaponization. So this is building out the exploit to use in the attack. So, you know, coupling uh, malicious code with a known um, exploit to a vulnerability. Delivery is just getting that malicious code or that exploit onto the system uh, that they're looking to target. Exploitation is the you know successful attempt at exploiting a vulnerability or a misconfiguration. Installation is once they've exploited the system and they want to install some malware or something to uh, you know infect the host and and you know move on with some of the other tasks that they want to do. Command and control is about establishing a communication channel between an attacker and the system. So, you know, they exploit the system, but then they want to be able to establish uh, communication so that they can continue on with uh, whatever they're trying to do once they've compromised the host. And then action on objectives is, you know, the um, action related to the goals of the attacker. So this is a could be a pretty wide variety. The attacker could be looking to exfiltrate and steal data. They could be looking to, you know, um, mine Bitcoin. They could be looking to just establish persistence and then get in a, a wider, broader feel for what environment they're in and what else they can compromise. So we want to monitor at all of these stages. It's really worth, you know, pointing out that it's important to build prevention and detection throughout this whole uh, kill chain to, you know, better protect your system. And 
the earlier that you can prevent an attack or you know prevent or detect an attack on the skill chain the better off you are so you know if someone's just poking and prodding in the reconnaissance phase and there's a way to you know block ips that are constantly uh, port scanning your system that's much better than if you detect it later on and they've already exploited the system so now mapping the uh, attack scenario that Notch outlined earlier to this kill chain, we can start to identify where these all uh, land within the within the kill chain. So for the first step of the attacker scanning a port to identify services uh, with a vulnerable remote code execution, this would be reconnaissance. They're scanning the system, they're trying to get an idea of what's going on, and um, that would map directly to reconnaissance. For stage two, with a Metasploit installation, this would likely fall under the delivery stage where they're pulling down something to then use to exploit the system. Leveraging a kernel vulnerability to break out of a container, this would be part of the exploitation phase where they've now leveraged some malicious code as part of, in this case, Metasploit, and they've exploited a system broken out of the container. In the fourth stage about replacing a running service with a malicious program to exfiltrate data, this would be in action on the objective. So you know, their, their intent is to steal data from the system and you want to uh, have some rules in place for that. So now that we understand how the system behaves and the steps the attacker could take to compromise the system, uh, it's time that we write some Falco rules. We, we need to have these in place. We want to map these to those different phases within the kill chain. So here's an example of a Falco rule. I'll break down uh, the different components of it. And this one specifically is mapping to the first step of the attack, which is the reconnaissance phase with scanning ports to identify services running um, with a vulnerable remote code execution. And this is specifically, this rule is looking at unexpected traffic over the SSH port. So if an attacker is scanning a host and they scan port 22 for SSH, uh, this would alert on that. So to break it down a little bit, the first section here highlighted in red is a macro to define a whitelist of allowed SSH hosts. So in this case, it's looking at a, an entire slash 24 CIDR block. Um, and you could also do individual IPs, however you need. You could have nothing here, and anytime someone tries to connect or scan on port 22, if this would trigger. Um, every Falco rule has to have a, a rule title, a description. The condition is the content that it's actually tr you know, triggering and monitoring an alert on. So in this case, it's looking at either inbound or outbound network um, connection. It's so looking at SSH port, which is defined as port 22. And then it's looking at anything that's not on the allowed SSH hosts. For the output, this is what's going to get logged when an alert or an event is triggered. And this is can be customized to capture you know, specific information that you need. Priority is really so that in your own environment, you can classify the severity of an event so this can go all the way from emergency all the way down to uh, informational or debug and and you can then use this to um, you know determine what the severity of the, the incident is you can also have tags so you can use this to just group your rule sets you could actually use this too if you wanted to map um, to the different security kill chain phases you could name this you know you could tag this with reconnaissance that could be helpful as well so here's another example for um, a potential reconnaissance example of scanning a port. So this is looking at unexpected API server traffic for the Kubernetes uh, API server. The API server is a critical component of Kubernetes. And you know from our system analysis, we identified and whitelisted all of our applications. So you can see here we've whitelisted web app uh, one and web app two. And those are allowed to communicate to the API server. And so we have this rule, if anything else is attempting to connect, we'll get alerted. You'll see here, this is where we're specifically saying um, anything that's not in our known contact list of accepted applications, then trigger an alert. 
All right, so an example for the Metasploit installation detection, this is the unexpected package installation rule. So this is a default rule that's provided by Falco. And again, we can add a list of known um, package managers that are okay in this environment, but we can then trigger on anything, you know, if someone were to do an apt-get install um, on a Metasploit package and pull that down, then we would get alerted to it and, and we can then, you know, investigate further. For stage three, for leveraging kernel vulnerability to break out of a container, one of the things that we can monitor for is the creation of a symlink over sensitive files. If there was an exploit um, you know, on the system, there could be some system uh, file changes that would occur and symlinks to you know, malware or other things that could be leveraged to then break out of the container. So we can monitor that. Similar uh, to the other rules, this has the same components there. And for stage four, with replacing a running service with a malicious program to exfiltrate data, an example of something we can monitor is Kubernetes uh, deployment being deleted. We, there's also rules to look for um, a deployment being modified or created. And so this could be an attacker attempting to replace a Kubernetes deployment with malicious code to then uh, look to exfiltrate data. And so... Uh, we want to detect an alert on that as well. So we can take all of these rules, we can start to map them to the kill chain. There's a lot of great uh, Falco rules, um, you know, right out of the box, as well as there's the ability to customize and focus in on exactly what we're looking for based on our system analysis. So next, Notch is going to talk about uh, testing and qualifying our rules as well as provide a demo. Thanks, Eric. We saw so many Falco rules for different stages of the security queue chain. This is great. But how do we verify that Falco rules and Falco itself behave as expected? At MathWorks, we stage Falco rules before we release them to production. Let me show you how we manually test Falco rules and how we automate them using Falco Event Generator. All right, so we have two windows open. I'll use one on the left to show output logs from Falco, and I'll use the right window to run commands. So the first thing I'll do is to port scan a service running in my cluster. Port scanning tool like Nmap is a great way to get to know the system, what ports are running, what operating system, and so on. In this demo, I'll use Nmap to see whether the SSH port is open. So as you can see, Falco does detect a traffic to the SSH port from the host that it doesn't recognize. This can be a good sign of someone trying to perform a recon on your system. Next, let me introduce you to my Nginx service. This Nginx service routes outside traffic to the other services inside my cluster. Let's assume that it has a remote code execution vulnerability I'll exit into my Nginx pod to run arbitrary commands. Okay, I have code execution access in the system. The first thing I might want to do is installing packages like TCP dump. I'm not going to install it, but as you can see, Falco detects the package installation. This is a good detection as all containers should be immutable, so we, don't, we do not expect any additional installation once the container is running. I could also try to replace files in the bin folder. And I could also try to write something to the SC host files. As you can see, Falco detects any activities to the sensitive file system. Now, unfortunately, this Nginx pod is not properly configured. The Nginx service routes traffic to the other services in the cluster, so it shouldn't have to talk to the API server. 
However, its service account has the permission to list pods, and its service account token is also mounted to the file system. The attacker can use the service account token to connect to the API server. Or the attacker could use the service account token to list the pods. And even worse, the attacker could maybe use the service account token to delete pods in the cluster. Luckily, the service account doesn't have the permission to delete the pods. And as you can see, Falco detects any unexpected connection from this Nginx pod to the API server. It shows the exact API request and the pod ID the request originated from. I have shown you Falco in actions and ways to manually test the detection rules. Now, in a large scale system, Testing rules manually may not be scalable. Fortunately, Falco has a project named Falco Event Generator that you can use to automate testing. The best way to use the project is to run it inside a container as some of its action can make changes to your file system. You can use the list command to show all the actions that the generator supports. As you can see, the project can perform a few system calls and Kubernetes action. Let me show you Falco Event Generator in action. Pay attention to the Falco log on the left hand side. For this demo, I'll show you an example of a system call generated by the project. I just use the project to make changes to the bin folder. Now, the event generator also supports integration tests against a running Falco instance. Here, I mount the Falco gRPC socket file to the event generator so that it can receive Falco events and validate the alert. The event generator runs system calls tests. This is a good way to ensure that any rule changes and Falco version changes don't impact your security detection. The event generator is a very exciting project and you're very welcome to contribute to the project by adding more test cases. So this wrap up the demo, I have shown you ways to manually test the Falco detection rules and also ways to automate them with the project called Falco Event Generator. All right, and now I'm going to talk about security observability and alert analysis. So after we, you know, go through all these phases, we've analyzed our system, mapped things to the cyber kill chain, we've written a bunch of rules, not just showed how we can test and qualify those rules and, and move things into production, then we really need to have a system in place that we can distill down all of this information. Um, you know, we get a, we could generate a lot of logs for events and we need to be able to kind of bubble those things up from a security perspective to, to analyze the things that really matter. So, you know, we've given you this picture of how uh, Falco can help in this complex environment. And so we're going to talk about security incident management. One of the benefits is that there's really flexible alert integrations. Uh, we can log things to syslog to push into a SIM or a log aggregator. Um, there's standard out, which was, you know, just uh, in the example that Notch gave, where we'll just write to the terminal. Uh, there's webhooks, so we can integrate in with things like Slack or Teams or other tooling uh, in your environment as well as TLS gRPC, which can be used to open a socket for testing for things like the um, Falco event generator as Notch uh, demonstrated. So let's take a look at our um, a dashboarding system that can be used to uh, monitor some of our events and further you know, investigate through the findings. So you'll see here, we 
pull in information on the top um, row here around um, file system violations, and then we're mapping those over time. And then below, we're looking at network traffic violations, and again, mapping them over time. One thing you'll see is that we capture the container ID here. And so if something suspicious pops up, we can then pivot through some of our application logs, our container logs, and we can start to correlate this data to really try to figure out if there was a security event. In addition, we can use some of the other tooling uh, that can come along with some of these um, applications. So we can use machine learning to take a lot of data and start to look at outliers in that, which we wouldn't be able to do uh, manually and identify potential security risks there as well. So I'm gonna show you an example of how we do that and generate an email alert. Uh, the other thing worth noting is that we can, you know, in addition to the dashboarding, which is good for monitoring, we can also trigger um, the emails, but also, you know, um, generate a page or alert teams in other manners as well. So here's an example of an alert where we are uh, looking at outliers. So we're monitoring for system commands and we are then getting an average of how many system commands we would expect to see in our environment on a in a um, on one of our systems. The average is 1.6, and then we're defining a threshold using the machine learning module, which um, will define an upper bound. So anything over 13.59 system commands. Um, on one of our hosts should then become an outlier and trigger an email. In this case, you're seeing that there are 14, so 14 system commands, which then triggered an alert. And you'll see we also capture the container ID. So this alone, you know, it could be an administrator making changes in a production environment, and we want to be able to you know follow up with them because that shouldn't happen. Or it could be that there's something malicious going on. So we can take this container ID and we can start to correlate that and try to figure out what's going on in our environment and how we can, um, you know, figure out exactly what's going on. So with that, that's it for our talk today. Uh, we'd like to thank you for attending and hope that you can take something away from this. We learned a lot in this journey. Uh, I think it can be super helpful for security teams to work with dev teams to integrate something like this to you know, help improve security. And uh, we'll be available for Q&A. Thank you very much.